you have your Bibles, Ephesians 3, 20, 20, and say amen. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now I don't know where you stand with that, but I got a pretty vivid imagination. Are you hearing me? According to the power that worketh in us. Now he's talking about the Holy Ghost. He's talking about God. How many is tired of mediocre? How many thinks that there's another level for you? How many believe there's more for you? Now, let me throw the caveat out there because I know I don't want to bother nobody, but if you're done, you're retired, and you just want to be comfortable, this won't apply to you. If you're finished, if you're done, if you don't think God can do any more, I'm going to bother you tonight. I don't apologize for that. I just pray that you'll change your mind. Okay? <laughs> Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. He's not done. What you read in the Bible is just the beginning of what God wants to do. A lot of rain is going to be greater if you're paying attention. World without end, amen. amen. Jesus, I need your help. I'm clay, I'm dust, I'm dinged up a little bit, but God, I need your help, your spirit, and your unction to help me because there's someone in this house that you're going to call to a higher level. There's some people in here tonight to, that are going to go to another level in you, Lord. They're, they're, they're going to decide to step out of the crowd and be counted. They're going to step up, Lord, and they're not satisfied with the status quo. And they're willing to take on more in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Give the person next to you a high five, a fist bump, a hallelujah, and you can be seated. I grew up when country music was king. And I drove around with a Dad that listened to K-R-A-K. Back then, crack meant something different than it does today. <laughs> now, I remember a song coming on the radio, I Never Promised You a Rose Guard. Now, I didn't look up the lyrics. In fact, I didn't even plan on saying this, so we're already off to a good start. Hallelujah. But Jesus never promised you a rose garden. I don't know anywhere where, where he, he wanted us to find flowery pathways of ease and feather beds and pillows and places to prop our feet up to do nothing. In fact, in Matthew 8, 20 through 22, it says, And Jesus saith to him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Some of us aren't walking with Jesus kind of like he walked. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Jesus gave us an honest idea of what a servant of the Most High and a follower of him might expect. In fact, name dropping is throughout the Bible of people that stood up when we're counted. Everybody wants their name on the marquee until it's time to do what it takes to get your name on the marquee. Are you hearing what, I say, what I'm saying? And so we know that throughout the Bible, we got David's mighty man. Moses referenced uh, fit man, and Paul stated names of men and women that stood out. Jesus called out people, even a centurion, for his great faith. And of course, there's the faith chapter of whom was stated the world was not worthy of them. Wow, what a statement. If you're worldly, I doubt it could be stated of you. So you have to be sold out to God and not the world to get that one. I want to talk about ex exceeding expectations, but I'm not talking about God exceeding expectations. I'm talking about us. 
if we serve a God that exceeds expectation, shouldn't you and I? Hebrews tells us, what shall I more, more say? For the time would fail me to tell. And he goes on a list. The call of God is an invitation to step out and to step up. The will of God is to lay aside everything to do his will. It is literally a choice. It's, it's deciding that, you know what, I've got a relationship to where I'm going to throw away my worldly black book and go all in right here. Luke 10 and 2 says, Therefore he said unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest that he would send forth laborers in the harvest. What's a laborer? It's a toiler. It's someone who's working diligently. A teacher. A worker. Someone that's, that is busy. Much is lost on what it means to work today. You know, I, I go back to being a kid and working on the farm. And, you know, when you work on a farm, nine to five don't cut into it. In fact, nine to five was banker's hours. Man, the, the sun was about to peak. You was up in the farm. And you didn't lay it down until it was going down and you couldn't see. Now, you got to go back. You have to understand. I, was, I lived in Europe. You have to understand back, 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 in the, back in the day, they had little kids as slaves doing all that. That industrial area started coming. Then, then, then you go back to our country uh, during, during the slave time. Can you imagine say, say, man, you know what? It's not 9 o'clock yet. I ain't got to get up to pick that cotton. Oh, wait a minute, it's Saturday. Am I blowing your mind or do you understand what I'm saying? Can you imagine? You on one of them old ships back in the 1400s and it's my day off, I don't want to row. It's Memorial Day. It's my birthday. I don't feel very good. Anybody know what TGIF means? You thanking God it's Friday. Why? 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 Why is that? Why is that? Thing? Why do we all know that? You know what it is? It's a way of saying I'm shutting it down for the weekend. Yeah, I got goals, and I got dreams, and I got things on. But it's Friday. I'm shutting it all down. I'm going to go ahead and slow my progress. I'm going to go ahead and step aside my hopes and my dreams to slow myself down and distract myself from what I really want. In fact, instead of going after what I really want, I'm just going to go lay out and get comfortable for a few minutes so I can run behind on my life plan and schedule. I'm not going to concern myself with putting out any effort today. So we kind of check out or lay aside our pursuits and our goals, and we even lay aside our dreams because somebody said, thank God it's Friday. And I changed TGIF for some saints today to TGIA. Thank God I'm alive. Let me do something with my life. Let me get ahead of something. Let me go ahead and read that book so that I'm smarter on Monday. Even the psalmist paints a beautiful picture of living for God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Who, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. It's TGIF. Nope. That will I seek after. 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up. Ain't no days off. I'm pursuing God. Okay. Well, that's kind of Old Testament. Well, let me get into the New Testament here. Paul said in Philippians 3, Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of the Lord. When's the last time you really pressed? Well, I'm not impressed. I ain't got no one busting on my heels that I just absolutely got to have you preach on a Sunday morning. I ain't got nobody but I need someone to come push me out of my job. What? When Jesus was walking, he grabbed 12 men. I need someone to take this over when I'm gone. How can you be successful without a successor? Are you passing on a burden or are you the burden? Let us therefore, as many be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same route. Let us mind the same thing, brethren. Be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I've told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. What did Jesus say to Peter when he said, man, don't that's kind of hard, Jesus, don't go to the cross. Man, we're coming up to the weekend, don't, don't go do that now. Get thee behind me. That boss wants you to work overtime. That boss wants you to work weekend. That boss wants this. That, okay, you'll do it for the money. Tell me you brag about how you do for money. You turn around and come for God. It's like, someone give me a telescope. I can't find them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Enemies of the cross. Listen, he, he gets specific here. It's, it, he's kind of nails. I don't really know that he nails people, but he nails this nation. Can I say it? Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. And it's not just food. You always got to get, you always got to have, and you got, it, it's, it, it, you're pursuing anything and everything but God. And whose glory is in their shame. You're, you're proud of this, but it's going to be a shame when Jesus comes. Who mind earthly things. Can we go there tonight? Is this too harsh? For our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be face, fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown. And crown. Let me say crown. This is going to come up here in a minute. Stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. What is Paul doing? What is he saying to these folks? You need an attitude of intensity. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. How many kids, brothers and sisters, Egypt got? Don't worry about what's going on over there. This is the fourth one. They got this. I'm sure they got this. I got people looking, they're taking care of their kids. This is going to change your life. This may change your eternity. You need to hear what I'm saying today. Oftentimes, I don't come in an attitude like this, but there's somebody here about to miss out on what God has for you because you'll take, you'll, you'll stand in the round in the most important time of your life. You, you, got peop, you got people laying you to rest before you're dead. You got people telling you to pursue things that are going to cost you everything. 
You're putting your life on hold for people who can't get their life together. Paul is declaring an attitude of intensity and influence to serve the kingdom of God needs to permeate the church. You don't, you don't think he meant it? Okay, he said in Ephesians. This I say, therefore, and testify to the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God. When's the last time you heard directly from God? When's the last time he just used you, you moved in a way, and someone... I don't even want to put something on it because it's open. It could be anything. It's the last time someone turned around and started living for God because you're intense. It's a saying, the world has never stopped evangelizing the church. Well, I'm about to get into that one too. Because of the ignorance that is in them. They're alienated because they're ignorant. Listen, ignorance is not a bad word. Stupid's a bad word. Ignorant means you just don't know. I am ignorant. I cannot drive one of those great big garbage trucks that reaches out and grabs. I'm ignorant. I don't know how to do it. I cannot step into my wife's fifth grade class and teach it. I'm ignorant. I don't know. Ignorance is not a bad word. Are you here? So he's teaching them. He's teaching us. Because of the blindness of their heart, it's time to say, wait a minute, there's more to God than what I've done. There's more to God than what I'm expecting right now. Now, I know if you're around, I'm going to tell you something. I, I'll never forget, what, what, we, we were at General Conference one time, and a preacher sure. wouldn't sit next to his dad because he didn't want his dad to influence him. Let me tell you something. Because if you're sitting next to someone that won't worship, don't really want to live for God, move. Move. Find it. Your soul's on the line. If you're with someone, my God, I, I just... Uh, They, they just buried a preacher a couple of years ago. I mean, recently, but a few years ago, this man was a church-building, soul-winning machine. I could take you to churches all throughout the Southwest and Texas that he built. But his beautiful wife died that he did all that with. And then he married this, he married this lady. And she was just too worldly. And the man had been sitting on the bench till he just died. What happened? She messed with his mind. Messed with his, you better be careful. I, I, hey, the Bible even tells ladies, if you're hooked up with a joker, that ain't going to keep living for God. Stay with him that you may influence him. Hey, sir, hey, ma'am, if you're with someone who ain't getting with it, you keep getting with it. Hope they catch up. But don't you dare fold the towel because you're waiting on them. You let them catch up. Don't you draw back. Hear what I'm saying to you. Because of the blindness of their heart. You got to care your heart matters. You're going to get in it. Who being past feeling. Have given themselves over to lewdness. To work all uncleanness or greediness. Listen. With greediness. Understand. That doesn't mean you're popping open some sort of filthy magazine. That means you're caught up in everything except God. That means you're caught up in, you're, you're, you're just, you're just, you're, 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 you're fawning and in your love and you're giving your life to, you hear what I'm saying? If you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct. Anybody at least live in the world come into the church? You know what you know what you're getting rid of? You're getting rid of the conduct, not the intensity. I, I was all in. I don't know about you. I was all in in the world. And all of a sudden, why, 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 why do we get in church all of a sudden we get civilized and dignified? And now, now we, you, you ain't doing nothing crazy for God. So God gets 
shortchanged by some people. Because the church has been trying to just show up in your nice little air-conditioned vehicle, put on a little suit, come in, wear your little Sunday hat, come in, have a little fellowship, a little dinner, and go home. That ain't church. Their demons still need to be cast out. Those people need to be delivered. Those people need to be baptized. Those people need to be, get Bible studies. It, it, when's the last time you got involved in the spiritual things of God to where you got devils upset at you? The old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. He goes on and says in chapter 5, See that ye then walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. How many of you in mind? How much time you got? How much time you got to get done your assignment that God gave you? I believe God gives everybody an assignment in their life. And when you get on the other side, you're going to be able to see how you did. Because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Stop letting half-hearted folks set your level of pursuit for God. Can I tell you something? When I, when I put prayer before church times, that's the latest possible moment to get there. Lord, my God, if you can read more and pray more, don't, don't, don't let limit, don't set limitations on what you'll do for God. Don't let lukewarm people have a say in your spirituality. The last thing you want to do is, if they ain't spiritual, don't listen to them when it comes to the things of God. Don't go to your buddies in the world or your girlfriends at the job and say, well, what do you think about this? Don't, are you kidding me? Are you out of your mind? Why don't you ask God about that and see what he says? Stop letting those that are doing absolutely nothing for God have an influence in what you're doing and wanting to do. Don't let mediocre folks around you lay you to rest. There's a huge difference, and this matters, and don't think that you don't think about this, between being remembered and being legendary. Anybody can be remembered for giving a little, but only sacrifice opens the door to become legendary. Listen to Jesus, because it's another level of sacrifice, commitment, and intensity. He says in Luke 17, 33, Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. When you give your life for his sake, you, 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 you preserve it. There's a difference between living for God and walking with Jesus. Living for God, yeah, you'll come to church. You'll show up. You'll come to Wednesday night. You'll do. Yeah, you'll, you'll put a couple bucks in there. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But that's not walking with him. I knew about living for God, but the guy that was with me, the Lord, I turned around, I watched how he was doing. I started copying. Do you think it's really a mistake or a coincidence that him and I both pastor churches now? Do you really think it's a coincidence that the people I like to hang around pastor churches? Yeah, don't, don't think there's not other things I like to do, but bottom line is I'm passionate about this. I may do other things, but this is my passion. And this is my passion, not just because I, it's not that I want to preach. I want to live for God. I want to pursue God. I, I want whatever God wants me to do. And the next thing you know, he handed me this task. I was doing this before I was doing this. Uh, but I just was doing it in the soup kitchens and the jails and on the streets. And, and man, I was meeting the, meeting the Mormons and the Hovis Witnesses at Safeway. And I was, hey, let's talk about the Bible. Here's the, next thing you know, I said, you know what? I got to get this man a pulpit. Be a guy with a message that God gives a pulpit to. Don't look for a pulpit and ask God to give you a message. We've got plenty of preachers. We need soul winners. Now listen to this, John 6, i got to hurry up. John 66, 66, and 62, 66. From that time, many of his disciples, these are believers, went back. They went back. Now listen, listen. They didn't stop believing. Just give, me, give, me, give me a little evangelistic license. I'm an evangelist tonight for five minutes. And walk no more with him. Then said Jesus to the twelve. These were all followers. They were followers. They were believers. But he turned to his disciples. Will you also go away? He said to the two, to the who? To the two, the twelve? Judas was there. 
Will you also go away? Then impetuous Peter. I shouldn't have done that. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Those folks that walked away were believers. Can I tell you something? People walk away and say no all the time. People complain about this. People complain about that. People get too busy. I get it. People walk away from Jesus all the time. But let me tell you something. People walk away just as often as people step up to a higher level all the time. There are people right now that are stepping up like never before. In fact, I'll tell you right now, there are so many young preachers that are coming up across, across this country. It's amazing. Now, I understand there's going to be those folks that just want the loaves and the fishes and a nice sermon, but there are still many of those people who want to, let me serve some of those fishes. Let me hand out some loaves. Let me be involved in the work of the Lord. But we all know the names of those who kept walking with them because they became legends. We all know how they died. You can go research it because they weren't just remembered. They became legends because they walked with Jesus. Their lives are recorded in history. They're legendary. But ain't nobody remember them other jokers. When Jesus asked them if they were going to leave too, you know what he was really saying? I'm looking for somebody, someone that's going to be an intense individual. I'm pretty sure when Peter said, to whom shall we go? I believe Peter said, okay, okay, you just checked the box. I've been looking for him. Oh, yeah. Don't think he wasn't. He had to pick some people. He had to choose some people. The Bible tells us the Lord, his eyes goes to and fro throughout the looking for, he's looking for someone ready to step up, stand out, and do something like they've never done. He's looking for someone that's got commitment on their mind. He's looking for someone that wants to be a ground chaser. Someone that wants a, wants a fire shut up in their bones type of people. That, that, that He's saying, I dare you to do more. I dare you to go the extra mile. I dare you to turn the other cheek. I dare you to go, go ahead and start that business so you can be more prosperous, so you can do more for the kingdom. There ain't nothing wrong with that. He's looking for those kind of folks. He's looking for people that are looking for a way in and not a way out. There's people. Go ahead and go get that better education so you can provide greater resources, not only to your family, but the kingdom of God. He's saying, I dare you to reach out to the lost. I, I, I dare you to buy some shoes for a needy child. I, I dare you to buy a meal for a family to try to win them to Christ. I dare you to fill your car with folks and bring them to the house of God. He said, if, if you're going to walk with me and, and come with me, you got to do these things. Uh, I dare you to break the spirit of the American nightmare to pursue, pursue heaven with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. I dare you to play without ceasing. I dare you to reach the lost. I, I dare you to start a home Bible study and love someone enough to care where they spend eternity. I dare somebody to believe greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I dare you to believe that you're in here more than a conqueror. I dare you to be persuaded and to go all in. Jesus was, and Jesus right now is still looking for some legendary leaders. Uh, those legendary folks that are going to step up and won't be stopped uh, by persecution. Won't be swayed uh, 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 despite what anybody says. Uh, legendary people still praise despite a little pain in their body. Legendary people still preach and praise when they're stocks and bonds in a prison. Legendary folks still spend hours practicing to play an instrument so that they can do it for the Lord. Legendary people press themselves, push themselves and do more than a mediocre. Spend hours every Saturday when a certain individual teaches I get texts the pictures and of the lesson that they've been putting together. You see what happens here what happens here really is propelled by what happens in private. 
If you're ever going to play an instrument to the anointing of God, you're going to have to spend hours of sacrifice. You're going to have to spend sacrifice many hours for, to do that instead of other things so that one day God could anoint you and souls would be changed and affected. Those that improve themselves in order to be called upon to higher ministries and demands. It's not about just making it to heaven. It's about bringing as many people with you as possible. There's nothing sicker to the mindset of God than someone saying, well, I got mine. That's all I need to worry about. I doubt those people even make it. There's an the understanding that under, the, the, the comfort is almost failure. If one soul could have been reached, and I missed them. Those that understand that's not about comfort of meat and drink. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm talking about legendary people. The ones that overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Does that sound like you today? It could be, but you got to check your mindset. You got to check your mindset. Some of you been done checked out, but I hope I got a couple of young people. I hope I got a couple of people still sitting. Some of you done checked out. I get, I, I, I know, I, I, I know. It's a Wednesday night. It's hump day. But I'm telling you right now, people can go to hell on a Wednesday night. You got to constantly check. Some of you checked all on your car, but then you check your spiritual mindset. Some of you check your weight when you check your spiritual mindset. Paul goes on to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So many people are denied their dreams and goals because they have a consistency versus intensity problem. Y'all need to hear what I'm saying. Young people hear me. If I can't reach an old person, I don't. Fine. I'm going to be like Brother Price. If I, can, if I can get this in your spirit, if I can get you to get this, I can save a whole life. Now, I, I know, and I don't mean to be rude, but I know, I'm sorry, I don't mean I love you less. I love you, but I know there's just some here tonight, you ain't got no intention of doing nothing different. You ain't got no intention of believing God for more. That's me saying, I dare you, please prove me wrong. Listen, you're missing out on what God really has for you. Because you have a consistency versus intensity problem. Hear me. Consistency is when you do something, and intensity is how you do something. And that's why many people, no matter what you do, how much you do, no matter who you're looking at and what you read, you're going to be denied because you think that just by being consistent at something, it's going to let you win. Hear me, get, get what I'm saying. Some think that just being consistent is all it takes. Bless God, I put my time in. It's my turn. Many think that being consistent earns you the right to win. You've been consistent. You've been faithful. Now your attitude starts, your attitude starts thinking, I'm being denied now. They're holding me back. Oh, you're at work. You've been consistent. That should have been my corner office. I've been denied that position. They should have put me up. I'm being denied that opportunity. I'm being denied that ministry. I'm being denied. I'm being denied what I earned. I'm being kept off the ministry team. I'm being mistreated. I'm being overlooked. I'm being denied my right. I've been consistent and I've been faithful and I've always showed up. And that automatically means it should be mine. Because if I stay consistent, if I keep showing up, if I just hang around, if I'm always here, I'm going to be used. Because I'm always here, I'm going to make the team. 
I'm going to be next. It's my turn. My consistency <laughs> says so. No, you won't. You can show up for everything. You can be consistent to every practice. You can never miss anything. And that's good. Faithfulness is awesome. Do not miss what I'm saying here. Get what I'm saying. Don't, don't misconstrue. Consistency is commendable. And it is necessary. But remember, all of Saul's soldiers, every man was faithful. They were all there faithfully standing around for 40 days, days while Goliath barked. They were consistent. They were there every day that the enemy stood up and screamed at them. They were there consistent for 40 days. They were all armed for 40 days. They all called themselves soldiers and armed men for 40 days. They could give you a play-by-play -play of everything they went down for 40 days. I'm qualified. I know what's been going on. They knew that there was a reward that the king was going to give the man for 40 days. They were all showing up consistently for everything. They didn't miss nothing. But consistency does not guarantee you the win. Standing there, showing up and being present does not guarantee you the win. Just showing up ain't gonna cut it. Just showing up to piano practice won't make you a great piano player. Just showing up for prayer won't make you an intercessor. Just showing up for church ain't gonna make you a legendary Christian. Just, just showing up, just showing up, just showing up for class ain't gonna make you a straight A student. Just showing up for practice ain't gonna make you captain of the football team. Just showing up ain't gonna get you on the honor roll. So until you get intense. Oh, I know you got consistency. You don't ever get intense to the point that nothing, nothing will get in your way. That not even you and your ugly mindset will get in your own way. You will, until you decide, you will not be denied and you're going to go forward and you're going to be intense and intensity is imperative to your forward progress. You will not be denied no matter what gets put in your way. You... Many folks, many people, as bad as they don't want to accept this, are never going to win simply because they're just not intense enough. I showed up every day, well, every practice. I didn't miss one. But you see, when I being raised in my early years in America, I learned to play football, baseball, and basketball. And my parents moved me to Europe, and they played soccer. So I was years behind. But just because I showed up at every practice, at every game, didn't mean I got to play. I got disgruntled. I got upset. To where I played, practiced and played so hard, my dog was better than the average player because that was the only competition I could find. My sisters wouldn't play. My mom ain't gonna come. My mom ain't gonna come out there and play. My dad is at work. You have to decide how bad you want something, and you got to change. Yes. Just, just wanting it ain't enough. You got to get intense about it. You got to get passionate about it. You got to realize I'm going to be about this thing and nothing else. Many folks want an amazing ministry, but it takes more than showing up. If I if I'm constantly having to say, well, no, you need to do this, you know, you you ought to be so passionate that you cannot and refuse to be denied. Because look at them. Look at them. Many people want to accomplish great things, but it takes more than just showing up. When you're mechanically going through the motions and you're down to just checking boxes and you show up, box checked, and you show up on time, box checked, and you show up wearing the right clothes, box checked, you show up and you got your Bible, box checked. But what are you doing now that you're here? 
What is your attitude now that you're here? What's your mindset while you are here? Well, I just came to sit back. I wasn't called to preach tonight. So I'll just do the minimum. Well, he's not worthy of all your praise. He's not worthy to show up on time for prayer. He's not worthy to get beside yourself realizing, my God, the preacher's preaching a message right down my street tonight, and I need to be thankful and get a dance about my situation. I don't want to be lying. You know, I'm not just going to find my seat and wait and see what happens. I come to praise. I come to worship. I come to magnify God. You see, there's a difference between Prayer and effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. Revelation 3, as many as I love. Listen, I, I need you to get this. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase. You may feel this is kind of rebuke. I don't mean it to be, but maybe you, maybe you know you haven't quite been where you should be. Maybe right now you know that, you know what, I've been kind of sliding out. You've been hitting that, you're in love with a snooze button more than you are Jesus. You in love with money more than you are ministry. Don't get mad at me. You, 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 you like sleep better than you like the music ministry. I love to play. I, I remember the pianist was up there just, man, he was just ripping it up and down. You ever seen them pianos in the mall? They, used to, they didn't have pianos in the malls anymore? I don't go, so I don't know. Well, back in the 80s, they had pianos in the mall. There'd be some dude on there just... Man, it'd be beautiful. And when we stopped, there's a couple of us stopped there, and he started playing. We started asking him to play certain songs. We're singing church songs right there in the mall. Oh boy, one of the guys leaned over. Man, I'd give anything to play like that. He said, "No, you wouldn't, because if that were true, you would. You don't. You like intensity. Now listen to what the Lord does and what His expectation of us is." As many as I love. Say he loves me. I rebuke and I chase him. He's going to be correcting me. Thank God for correction. Look at what he says our part is. Be zealous. Therefore and repent. You know what? I've been doing it wrong, God. I repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Here's your next thing. If any man hear my voice and open the door. Right now, you, you, you're making the decision to open the door for more or not. And I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. That zealous is to burn with zeal, to be zealous in the pursuit of good, to desire earnestly and pursue, to strive after, busy oneself about him, to exert oneself. Listen, Jesus was, listen. Jesus was constantly surrounded by people. People constantly just showed up to be around him. But if you pay attention, it was the intense people he touched. It was the intense people that got their miracles. And it was the intense people that were used and he focused on. That lady crawling through the dirt who was entirely focused and intent on touching his hem got her miracle. It was that blind Edgar, when he knew that Jesus was passing by, that screamed to the top of his lungs, that refused to be quiet. It's that proud little man, Zacchaeus, who humbled himself and climbed a tree. There are all sorts of people who showed up, but it was those with intensity that Jesus focused on, and he grabbed them, and he pulled them out. That's what Jesus did miracles for. Don't get me wrong. I understand. You got to show up, but it's how you show up that matters. It's Well, let's, let's, get, let's get back to David and Goliath when all the soldiers, David showed up. Oh, for 40 days, it brought battle had already been going on for 40 days and night, it already been going on. And David showed up. David showed up doing another job. He's a delivery boy. All them soldiers weren't worried about him stealing anybody's shine because he's just a delivery boy. Oh, God, send us some delivery boys. Send us some humble people. Well, I'm just be delivery. What, what can I? Let me just be a doorkeeper. Let me just. 
Don't talk about doing great things if you can't do the little things. Can, I, can, can we be honest about that for a minute? Can we just be real about that for a minute? And I'm not just talking about this church. I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about your private life. I'm talking about God sees it all. And, and I, I believe you sent me to help someone. You're on the threshold and you're wondering what it is and you're struggling with what it is and you say, but God, I'm faithful and I'm showing up. But it's your attitude about it. It's your intensity. It's, 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 it's what you're really about. You just can't check the boxes. David showed up. He did his job. But he had a mindset that he was always ready for more if he saw a need. He saw a need, and he's looking around at all these men who should have met the need, and he offended them all because he said, is there not a cause? There's nothing worse than seeing a whole bunch of people that could answer the need, and there's only one person that notices it's there. Here's Goliath. You know, he's kind of hard to miss. All the things around here that need to be done, all the things in the kingdom of God, and there's some people oh, just showing up. But look what David teaches us. Look what he look what he teaches us because he's just tenacious. David wants to get to the problem. You go read what he had to go through to get to it. David's so intense compared to all the other men. They're all focused on the problem. They're all focused on what would happen if they did, but no one was like, well, go look. Because when David saw the need, he had showed up. His tenacity stepped in. When David saw the problem, his desire to be the solution stepped in. Many people, oh, we, this and this is wrong and that's wrong. I can tell you who the leaders are. They don't point to what's wrong. They become the solution to what's wrong. Pastor needs to do this. Pastor needs to do that. Pastor probably needs to sit you down. Listen, listen. We know David been anointed. In fact, he'd been anointed and sent back to the sheep. He didn't quibble. He didn't quake. He didn't. Well, bless God, I'm anointed now, man. You give me a better job to do that. I ain't watching them sheep. He went and did it. The day you can't take care of sheep, the day you can't love your neighbor, the day you can't really teach a Bible study, the day you can't pray for someone, guess what? You ain't got you ain't going no further. I don't care what you show up to do. You realize David not one time found a seat. He wouldn't stand around. He wanted out the problem. David wasn't like everybody else. We have to be two-mile people in a one-mile world. We got to step up. There got to be something about us. We got to stand out and be different. There's a lesson in the story that applies to everyone here tonight. David was anointed. David was prepared. David was submitted. David, all he needed was an opportunity. And listen, your opportunity will come. But do those other things fall in line first? You can't wait for the opportunity to rise to get ready now. Well, if I knew he was going to ask me to preach, well, trust me, I ain't. Unless you're burning up and telling me, man, I won this person I talked to. Really? I don't ask people that don't build houses to work on my house. I don't ask people to work on my car that don't work on cars. Or what, we're going to treat the church different? Oh, because you would like to do it. Oh, you got a burden now because it's your turn. Let's be real now. We can't treat the church and God like it's a second-class entity on the planet. It's the most important one here. Get fired up. Get intense. You will not be denied. Most opportunities come disguised as problems. Most opportunities come disguised as difficulties, but they're really doorways, they're rites of passage. It's an opportunity disguised as a problem. You have to understand because it'll call out those not fit for the next level. It'll, it'll weed them out. 
God's called every one of us higher. He's called every one of us to come out from among them. Who? Those that stand around. Can I tell you right now that so many things are trying to open up to you? God right now looks and he's got so many plans for you. He's got so many things he wants to do for you. He's got so many things that he's got designed for you. He, God isn't just up there wringing his hands wondering what to do next. Man, I don't know if anybody in here believes that. God isn't up there stressing out over what's going on in the world. You think, oh, but he's not wringing his hands up there. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? He knows. He is God. He knows what he's going to do. Listen. Get my spot back because my iPad's giving me trouble. Mm. David. showed up and an opportunity presented himself and he was ready. Well, you didn't think God knew? I wonder if he just kind of moved that little subtleness on his dad. Hey, tell that boy to go take some cheese and bread to his brothers. Listen. God has most open doors for you. But if you're so attached to the past, if you're so attached to who you've been, then you can't quite become who you're supposed to be. Yeah, there comes a time. Listen to me, I'm talking to somebody. You will no longer fit in your old story. Oh. You're coming to a, a, a chapter change in your book and life is trying to get you to be born again, new for what's coming. It requires you, you own your past, but you got to own the possibility of the future. On the other side of that, you, be, you begin to become and experience what God's intended. They anointed him to be king and sent him back to the sheepfold, but you don't understand. God's like, okay, he's safe. I'm going to do a couple things and then I'm throwing him right in and I'm going to create a platform where everybody else is standing around but he gets elevated. No, nobody knew who David was till Goliath showed up. Listen, you have got to grow and change and your mindset and your attitude has to become barely recognizable to yourself. People got to look, who's the, I remember that when I left the, the church that I came into first and I went up to be a youth pastor. And then God moved me out and I pastored a church and then Sister Price passed away and I got a phone call while I was at a, a conference. And I left the conference and I drove 28 hours straight through. I got there, I showed up and I'm going in, I'm recognizing everybody. People didn't recognize me till I spoke and they didn't recognize my voice. Things had changed. I was different. I carried myself different. I guess I walked and something happens when you get into the things change about you. I would just, it's just, you, you've got to understand if you've always been that and you don't allow God to make you this, you can't go there. God wants to take Dave, David. I understand you got this seat pulled and you got that mentality, but I'm going to take you back because when I bring you out and you step up here, Saul didn't even recognize him. Go read it. David was a heart player for Saul prior to Goliath. I doubt David played mediocre because he was able to do things for Saul that Saul couldn't do for himself. I believe David was passionate about playing that instrument. I believe David put all his effort into his lyrics and he wanted to play the best he could play. It was for the Lord. David played for Saul prior to Goliath, but at the end of it, after Goliath was slain, he asked, hey, who is this guy? You see, when you, when you allow God to take you, when you allow God, you think this is something, you think so, I said, remember when Joseph rose to, 
His brothers were in line to come get fed. They didn't recognize him, but he recognized them. See, the problem is people expect you to still be there, but when you're not there. Who's understanding what's being preached here tonight? That it's time to allow God to transform you, to renew you, to make something mighty out of you, something intense out of you, that you got to be tired of who you've been so you can be who you're going to be. Listen, Saul, Samuel, 1 Samuel 16, chapter 16, verse 1. And David came to Saul and stood before him. And he loved him greatly and became his armor bearer. David's his armor bearer. Now, after Goliath, chapter 17, verse 58, and Saul said to him, whose son art thou? What? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant, Jesse the Bethlehem. Intensity will change you. Intensity will promote you. Going up's wonderful, but when you show up with a passion and you show up with some intensity and you show up in your difference and your prayer's on fire and you get fire shut up in your bones and you get passionate about your singing and your preaching and your teaching and the things that go on, ah, you become a force to be reckoned with. Your voice will permeate, it'll influence and affect others. You got to get passionate until you get intense to the point that nothing, nothing, nothing will get in your way. Not even you and what you like and your proclivities. And you're never going to win until you get passionate about being who you could be. Showing up's good. But showing up with intention and intensity is great. Listen, <laughs> some of you have never ever given more than 60%, and you've got 100% in you. I know you're talented, but you don't want to get up, give up sleep. I know the potential's there, but you can't give up Netflix, and you can't give up movies, and you can't give up this. Honestly, every one of you, there's no one here that can do what you're able to do. There's no one on this planet. There's no one here with your capabilities and your abilities. And all those things are obvious. The problem is you seldom do it. You love your hobbies too much. You love entertainment too much. You love social media too much. You love lazy too much. You love your hobbies. You love your vices. You love your phone. Understand, if God is looking, why not you? I can tell you why. Because I'm just as guilty sometimes. There's something that you love more than God and yourself. Because if you loved yourself, you'd go all in with God. There's something you love more than your dreams and your goals. Listen, the Bible is the greatest book ever written. You really need to start reading it. It will recondition your mind. It will help you renew the spirit of your mind. I, I, I'll never forget, and I don't say this because trust me, I've fallen flat on my face, and, and I say this to you because I expect every one of you to be better than me. I'll never forget it. It smote my heart when I heard it. I was like, oh. What could I have really done? I had a great youth group. I came out of a great church, a great youth group. And I remember, remember standing there and there were some people talking because I just got done preaching at my home church. And I'm standing here and I heard something. Hey, you know what? We had a great youth group, but Steve Crow got something we didn't get. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get a different Holy Ghost. I didn't get some sort of divine unction to read the Bible. In fact, I'll be honest with you. I was pretty much a, a nothing burger my whole life. My, my, I mean, if you only knew. If anybody in my family got voted least likely to succeed or do anything, I wore that. That was my clothing. That was my moniker. But 
if you let the Holy Ghost and intensity get a hold of you, if you'll finally decide to quit being about the world and get about, I don't care how young you are or how old you are, if you just finally decide to let God have his ways, can I tell you what he said in Jeremiah? I know the thoughts I think towards you. I wonder what he thinks about he could do with you if you went all in. Listen, we live in a world that's caused us to think bad things. And I know i got to wrap this up. I'm not done. And I know we think bad things are supposed to happen to us. But I can promise you, God has other ideas. Isaiah says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Watch what you say to yourself. I'm, I say this because I'm the worst. Be careful how do you speak to yourself. You understand, the Bible says in Proverbs, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat. Stop condemning yourself. Stop ridiculing yourself. Stop tell, saying the words I can't. Stop saying it's too hard. Stop, stop letting the vernacular of the world get in the mind and the mouth of a Holy Ghost filled saint of God. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Get intense about it. He's looking for someone. It might be you. It could be you. Why not you? Never say you're broke or broken. Say, I'm overcoming a cash flow problem. I'm overcoming a minor setback of a bad attitude. You know, I, I did a repeat today. I don't learn very well from history. I'll take care of my pooches. You guys know I love my dogs. Ain't no one else hanging out me at, hanging around without me at the house. When we got Grace eight years ago, she was a puppy, and she was still being potty trained. Now, judges, potty, you train a big dog, potty train fast. We had a dog Armageddon one time before he learned. Anyway. Grace was just a little puppy dog, and she had peed, and I come walking around. You understand the first house we were in had this polished porcelain white tile in, in one of the living rooms. And I go walk in, and I, I turn a corner like this, and everything went out from under me. And when I, when I landed, my leg, this leg went out, and this knee came crashing, smacked. I mean, it smacked, and I'm laying there. And I don't remember if it went out of joint or one. I know my head was out of joint. My knee swelled up, but I, I, did, I actually thought I had probably cracked or broke something. Well, today, something with the dogs and I go walking around, but this time it wasn't tinkle, it was drool. See, I'm walking now because tomorrow I'm not going to be able to. This thing's already about as big as Aaron's head right now. I come around and it happened just as fast, but when you've been through it before, you see it in slow motion. And I'm like, and I'm waiting for the impact of that knee. And nothing. And I laid there and I waited for the pain to suck. Am I gonna am I gonna live? Am I still gonna be laying here when they walk in? Do I need to call Joe to preach for me? Woo! Milliseconds that all went through my head, and I was like, I they went. I'm preaching this message for somebody else. Yes. I'm going to call myself back up and I'm going to whoop myself. I want someone to get this message tonight. Maybe it's you, Lacey. Maybe it's you, Tia. Maybe it's you, Erica. Maybe it's one of these young people. Or maybe one of you old folks will finally decide, why am I sitting here till I die? Let me get up and get intense. I may limp tomorrow, but one of you might decide to start leading. One of you might start to get in tent and get on fire, and it'll be worth it to me.
I better wrap it up. I'm not done. I got, I got quite a bit more, but I'm going to stop right there. Let's all stand. You guys want me to continue this next week? All right. I didn't intend to do this one, brother. Every day is a gift. I'm going to say this. Stop letting people who don't have their life together cause you to put your life on hold. You don't live through the lives of your children. They live, they live for you, through your their own eyes and you later. Listen to what I'm saying. God's called you to something. Don't, don't bypass your calling for what you hope and think they might get to. Are you hearing what I'm saying, young people? Stay in your mom and dad's house and mooch off them on financially as long as you can. Go to school, but go to school with the intent to get straight A's. Don't, don't waste this time. Go there and get that education. That way you come out, you can look at mom and dad and let them say, listen, I'm going to get you a better house than you ever bought for yourself. Right. Not because you're a big bag and braggadocious, but because you love them because they care for you enough to let you go to school. Live for God. Yeah. Don't turn around where they got to always wonder where you're at. Yeah. I know that temptation is there, but how many times you got to see stupid people do stupid things and you go and join them? Yeah. You know how many girls are out running around there pregnant? Right now? But he said he loved me. They always say that. Oh. They ain't nothing new. True. You don't get married. Just because, hey, he's cute. Sex is not made for love. Sex was made for marriage. Anything before that's fornication. That's the you know. Let me tell you something else I learned. Young people, I'm, 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 this is for you. This is what happens. They play on your emotions. They'll act like they love you to get sex, and you'll give them sex because you want them to love you. Can I get an amen as the pastor's right? And don't, don't think that's the only girl gets hurt. The guy gets hurt too. He slowly loses the value. And so when he finally gets married, he won't treat her right. Church, this time we got intense for things of God. God didn't give you the Holy Ghost just for goosebumps. If he's given to you to lead and guide you to all truth, then why are you confused about the life you live in? He wants to walk with you and talk with you. Maybe it's time we renewed the spirit of our mind. And say, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. L listen to me. I'm going to say something scary here. You might just have to push away people you love dearly so that you can hear the voice of God. My own family, I pulled up for Christmas. I hadn't seen, actually, I hadn't seen my family in about two years. Phone calls and that, not, you know, landlines. I like you got now. Walked in and one of my siblings just got out of the military and was there. Sitting around, I didn't do everything I used to do. I don't even like you anymore, Steve. I liked you better when you were a drug dealer. You liked it better when I was getting shot at? You liked it better when I was almost, almost killed myself multiple times? You liked it? I may love you like a sibling, 
but I love myself enough to know I can't listen and be around what you have to say. Can you imagine if Job would have listened to his wife? I don't know where you're at right now. I don't know what you're facing. But I tell you, I know God knows. God knows. When God is looking for someone to use for his divine purpose, listen, I'm going to open this altar right now. He will bypass the complacent for the bold. And he will overlook the satisfied for the hungry. And he will ignore the popular for the available. Let's come in.